Good morning, everyone. I wanted to read to you an extract from a book I've been reading with my children that I've been really enjoying. Um, it's part of the Podkin series. It's called The Beasts of Grimheart. It's the third book in the Podkin series that you know I love. So the first one was The Legend of Podkin One Ear. The second one is The Gifts of Dark Hollow. And this is the third one called The Beasts of Grimheart. So I'm going to read you an extract from it, just a part that I read that I thought you'd like. The day that Grimheart Forest woke and sent its army out to war is a story that will be passed down from rabbit to rabbit through generations. It was the seventh day that Podkin, Paz and Pook had been missing. Crom and the others had spent two days following Vetch's trail, only to lose it at the very edge of the forest. Not knowing what to do, they had headed for the nearest warren, Silverrock, and asked the chieftain for help. Chief Agbert had been very understanding. He let them stay, and even helped them to run daily search parties into the forest. The children's mother and the main party of Dark Hollow Rabbits had also arrived a day ago and learnt the terrible news. Everyone, except for Bridget, was in a state of shock, thinking they would never see the little ones again. The mission to Sparrowfast was completely forgotten, and then word came that Chief Hennick's rabbits were coming to them, the entire Warren. The little messenger bird that had brought the news had only a tiny piece of parchment. Help us, we are fleeing, it had said. The Gorm are here. Wondering what it meant, Chief Agbert had summoned the whole Warren along with the recent arrivals from Dark Hollow. The entire group of rabbits were gathered outside the entrance gates, ready to welcome Sparrowfast, when a shout went up. The North! Look to the North! The rabbits all turned their heads to where the deep green cloud of Grimheart Forest stretched into the horizon. There, pouring from the forest's edge, was a sight fit for the most bizarre of legends. Wolves, huge ones, fanged ones, sixty or more in every shade of grey, brown and black. At first the rabbits rubbed their eyes and shook their heads. Then they started to scream and wail. Then they noticed something else amongst the tide of fur and teeth. Giant, horned figures striding towards them with sweeping cloaks made of leaves, webs and brambles. It's the beasts of Grimheart! A shout went up. The beast and all his family and a whole load of giant wolves. The rabbit warriors of Silver Rock and Dark Hollow drew their weapons and tried to form a shield wall. It was tricky as most of them were still staring, mouths gaping open. Amongst the army of wolves and beasts, Pook was riding on Trufang's back. Podkin and Paz were running beside to keep up. Podkin, look! Paz shouted over the panting, growling din of the super pack. There's a whole load of rabbits outside Silver Rock. What are they doing? Podkin called back. He could see the warren mound of Silver Rock the rows and rows of wooden beehives in their neat little fenced enclosures, and, by the entrance doors, a crowd of rabbits that looked as if they were all about to have a heart attack at the same time. So I'm just going to pause there. So basically, you've got Crom and the rabbits from Dark Hollow and this new warren that we haven't heard of before called Silver Rock, all on one side, and on the other side you've got all these wolves coming towards them, and so these guys start to panic. But Podkin is with them and Pook is riding on one of the giant wolves. And they're coming towards them thinking well, there's nothing wrong here. They just look like they're just a bunch of guys coming towards them. These guys think they're being attacked so they get ready with their spears and their swords. Um, I don't know, Paz replied. Some kind of ceremony looks like. Put your crown on. Why, Podkin said. It'll look amazing. Paz grinned at him and he found himself grinning back. They'll think we're some kind of wild hunt from the forest, he thought, pulling the crown on his head. I'm going to be part of a real-life fairy tale. His excitement instantly transmitted to the three alpha wolves who howled, setting off all sixty wolves. Awoo! Pook shouted beside them, making them laugh. The next thing Podkin knew, Deadeye, 
the black-furred pack wolf leader, was behind him, scooping him up with his nose and flipping him up to ride on his shoulders like Pook. Nightclaw, the other alpha wolf, did the same to Paz. The three of them pulled ahead of the pack, leading the throng, all of them waving and cheering at the startled rabbits before them. Luckily, it was Yarrow who first spotted the little rabbits, just as the Silver Rock warriors were getting ready with their spears. It's Podkin, he yelled, and Paz and Poop, look there, riding on the wolves. Podkin's mother, standing with Chief Agbert, let out a shriek. The other dark hollow rabbits peered closer, then began to cheer. Instead of running in terror from the approaching wolves, they started dancing and shouting. The Silver Rock rabbits didn't know what to do. Swords and spears were lowered, but not too much. And they stood back as all the rabbits of Dark Hollow rushed to meet the new arrivals, Podkin, Paz and Pook, wolf riders, lords of the forest. And all the time Bridget stood quietly watching, a smile on her face, alongside Yarrow the Bard, who had both paws clutched to his head, frantically trying to remember every single tiny detail of the best homecoming scene a bard could ever hope for. And so they meet up and it's okay, they don't get attacked. But I really like that, that sort of sweeping across the forest. So that's the Beast of Grimheart available in good bookshops, available online as well in audiobook form, I'm sure. Um, that's linked to your reading task today, so I'll put that online in a minute. I hope you're all good. Enjoy the weather as best you can today. We're all missing you still. Uh, take care. Bye.